continue to hang around the Delta. Here we are. I mean, the whole idea is that you would come to the crossroads sometime before midnight and sell your soul to the devil. Any crossroads would go. That's the standard blues myth. But as times have changed, the blues haven't really changed. They've kind of stayed in this one little area. But you know what? There's a bunch of guys down in Oxford, Mississippi. They're trying to do things a little different. Marry the old with a whole bunch of new. They're called Fat Possum, and we caught up with them at dawn. This whole thing, the fat possum thing, how did it get together? How did it all happen? Um, you know, there was no plan or long range thing. It was just, um, I had seen RL play, uh, and I just basically wanted to get a good record of his out there. How about the place, I mean, the region that you're in, and, and a lot of these guys, they, they are born and will die pretty close to where it is. You know, it's just there's something going on here. The strangest, most horrible places have always produced the sort of most interesting howls. Hey, young, young so tell us where we are, where we're going, and what this is here. Water Valley, Mississippi. This is the way to the studio. So we're pulling into the Fat Possum studio? Yep. basically had an ADAT and about five mics and you know we would go to the clubs basically and record and um and now they're in a Jew joint so we kind of do it here so is there none left not really no crack has taken its toll on it it's changed so much in you know, like 10 years mm -hmm. it's changed a lot in five years yeah those old folks don't feel comfortable anymore I mean because you know these some of these towns Detroit's got nothing on them Greenville Mississippi <laughs> Talk about um, this guy. Talk about T-Model 4. This is his rod. He is like a, just a happy-go-lucky <laughs> psychopath. You know, I mean, he's he's the most pleasant person to be around. I mean, he's, he's nothing uh, gets him down. That's the happy-go-lucky part. Where does the psychopath part fit in? When he starts talking about his family history. <laughs> killed somebody when he was 17. He still has a scar on his leg from being in a chain gang. But didn't he find his dad in bed with his first wife? Yeah. His dad beat him so bad he lost a testicle when he was a little kid. It's going to shape what kind of man you are. It is. It definitely has a lasting effect. But then Timo will go, well, I'm glad he did it because he made a man out of me. It is amazing that, that he's been through so much shit and so much just like some sort of Vietnam movie, you know? And, um, and he's so outgoing and friendly and never complains. Hey, young, young the charisma of your artists um, has really extended who they are to people. They're not just a blues guy. There's some stuff going on with them. Talk about the yeah. people on your label. Well, I mean, R.L. especially, you know, you have to just be almost evil not to like R.L. I mean, R.L. is like the only person I know that can laugh at other people's misfortune in a way that's almost respectful and kind. You know, you really can. I, I mean, I remember one time, uh, we, we were doing some interview, or he was, and we were driving around, and there were all these homeless people in Washington, and Ariel just kept commenting on what huge living rooms they had. <laughs> all right, so it's 6 o'clock in the morning. Here we are in East Memphis, Tennessee. We're heading back to Oxford, Mississippi, because Fat Possum's big recording artist, R.L. Burnside, got a bit of a situation. All right, so here's the situation. We're supposed to do this interview with a blues legend, R.L. Burnside, at his place in Mississippi. But the situation is his daughter was bit by a black widow spider. 
I'm not lying, this is the truth. So we ended up hooking up with RL right here at the Baptist Memorial Hospital in northern Mississippi. We're cooking with gas now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. RL Burnside from Coldwater, Mississippi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You love music, right? But yeah. I mean, you're not, you're not yeah. 21 years old. Why do you still do this? Well, uh, I like it, and uh, I like doing something. You got to do something to make a living, you know. And I like music. Because you can make more out of music than you can on one of them jobs, you know. I didn't kill him, now. I just shot him. I told him that looked to him and the Lord about dying, you know. You know, everyone thinks it is. Like, we just sit there and look for, like, murderers or for some sort of second-rate America's Most Wanted production team, but but no, I mean, these guys, you know, they were sort of, they all, I mean, all these guys came out of the sharecropping and system, they were totally disenfranchised, you know, I mean, and, you know, so all they knew was, was a world that was built to keep them down. There is some sort of, like, notion that, like, you know, or whatever, some sort of myth of, uh, some kids are driving by some old sharecropper shack and like hearing a guitar and then stopping you know finding was not that big of a mystery i mean i didn't really discover i mean they were already kind of there playing um our whole deal was just trying to like um make professionals out of them <laughs> when matt comes knocking on your door the first time says he wants to record with you what were you thinking well i started to shoot him but i <laughs> <laughs> you got terrible aim <laughs> <laughs> my gun snapped tonight just went out and talked with him then you know <laughs> yeah. we've been going along ever since were you suspicious at first well i d didn't know how he was going to go out to try him while and see what happened and the after we got together we got to be good friends a lot of these guys don't know anyone that's escaped the sort of shadows of poverty. Mm -hmm. And that's because the whole system was designed to keep them in there forever. I grew up on a plantation, you know, and I would have never thought I'd have been out making records, you know. I never would have believed that. All right, well, there you go. Uh, we are done this episode of The New Music, uh, coming to you way from the Deep South. We're about to get back in the car and, uh, and drive our way back up to Canada again. There's lots of ways to uh, get involved in what we do here at The New Music, and obviously we'd love to hear from you. It seems bizarre giving you a website uh, at the grave of a man who died in 1938, uh, but uh, it's info at That's how you can email us or just go to thenewmusic.net. So from Robert Johnson's final resting place, uh, well... Good Lord willing, we'll see you next time. So here we are, driving on our way to the Delta. We're lost. The funny thing about down here is we get lost a lot. <laughs> I don't know if it's the guys in the front seat or if it's just we get lost a lot. We've been lost more than we've been found. <laughs> I've never, ever been lost so much.